HQ and today's tutorial we're going to show you and demonstrate our generate invoice PDF plugin which was recently published to the bubble plugin store and this plugin basically now allows you to generate invoices with or without text in a PDF form which you can then save or send or yeah basically use and we're uh, basically building on top of a free API and all you have to do is install the plugin put in all the information and uh, you will receive an invoice via PDF and we will show you first of all how to use this plugin we will show you how to work with the return PDF save it in your database um, send it somewhere and so on and we'll also take a look at and this may, might be more relevant for German users in Germany for example it's required to have uh, invoice numbers which are ongoing um, and we're also going to show you how to do something like this in your bubble application so we have installed the plugin here it looks like this and I'm on my page here right now and um, let's say for example a user um, um, let's start off with just a simple button okay and this button should say generate invoice and what we want to do we want to click start at a workflow we can head over to plugins and then we have invoice simple invoice with text or simple invoice without text so let's try with text okay you can ch uh, change the language here of the invoice itself it's set to um, English US um, you can change it by just changing the default locale so for example German would be like this um, we're just gonna keep with English the from so from which company or from which address um, the invoice is and in most cases that's your company so my name etc for the logo what you want to do you want to provide a logo in the form of an URL so how, how are you gonna do that well you could either use a picture uploader upload an uh, image and then say all right picture uploader ace URL or what you can just do you can upload a video uh, a logo for example if you go to um, your SEO meta tags you can just directly upload something here um, well, let's actually go to our file manager search if we have any logos um, yep I'm gonna use this logo here even though it doesn't make sense but just I'm just gonna copy the URL here as you can see so let's copy that and I'm gonna paste that here so this is gonna be our company logo so to whom is this charge in most cases you want to maybe use dynamic data again we're going to keep it really simple test company b your name obviously the date let's add the current date time here do something dynamic the quantity so this will automatically then calculate the price so let's say you charged two quantities which costs 99 each um, the name of this product is um, t-shirt for example okay the invoice number is whatever the currency is US dollars again you can use the ISO code to change the currency and then how much tax percentage should be charged okay so on a click on the click of a button this invoice will be generated now the question is how do you have access to this you have access to this by result of step one's result whatever that is so what could you do with that for example you could say all right I want to make changes to things to the current user okay um, let's actually do that for the current user let's have a new field which is a list of invoices okay which is files a list of files let's create that okay and then we can say all right so I want to make changes to thing the current user I want to add to his list of invoices I want to add result of step once file and that's basically all you have to do because this is already a uh, data type file as you can see evaluates to a file you don't have any errors so this works fine already what we can then do we can show an alert if we have one okay uh, let's just call that saved or created all right like this position at the top and let's show this alert all right and let's also um, beneath this button create a repeating group which is uh, of type um, file actually and the data source will be the current users invoices okay and what we want to have here we want to have a links to all the invoice of the user so we're going to have the current sales file URL okay and want to um, open this in external page so open new tab current sales file URL Okay, you can also use this in combination with a downloading plugin. So let's actually try that as well. So I'm going to add um, a downloading plugin. Just search for download. There's a few free ones available. So for, for example, this one by AirDev is really great. Just add that. And let's have a nice icon here. Download 
And when this is pressed, I want to download a file, which is dynamic link, the current sales file URL, file name, my invoice. Let's actually go ahead and preview that now quickly. And um, let's actually also log in. We're not logged in as any user. So let me just quickly create a new user just as an example. I'm going to log in as this user now. So run as. And I'm going to generate this invoice. Okay. It's loading. And we have the alert and we have our first invoice here. As you can see, it's saved to our, our bubble database. So under um, the Amazon AWS. And we have the link here. So we can click on that and the actual hosting link will open. Also, so that looks quite nice already. So. This was our address. We built to this address. This was our image, our shirt. That's our item. We have two quantities. The rate is $99 amount. And then the tax is added to that calculate dynamically. And this is our total price. We have the date, which is today and the time right now, which is correct the in and the invoice number. So really, really simple. And also a user will be able to download his file. I clicked on this and you can see my invoice.pdf is downloaded and same thing. The user can then download it as well. So this is basically the gist of this plugin. And now I want to show you some maybe advanced things that you might want to do. What you want to do, for example, is have um, ongoing invoice numbers, especially if you're in Germany or have German customers, um, this is required. So let's, let me show you how to do that. So you're going to create a new data type called invoice numbers. Okay. Just like this. And this will just uh, have one type called number and will be of type number or just one thing called number. Let's create that. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're just going to create the first invoice number. Okay. Uh, it doesn't have to be one. You can start off a higher number. It doesn't matter. But the more important thing is that it's ongoing. Let's start off 100. Okay. All right. Um, and so for example, now if a new invoice is generated, let's try that. So let's, let's see what we're going to do. We're going to say, all right, when a new invoice is generated, we want to, we want to use the invoice number. We're going to say, all right, we want to use, do a search for invoice numbers, the last item, basically. So the, the invoice numbers, last item sorted by number descending. Yes. So we're going to, we're going to get the highest number, which is the last item, which means then the first items number. And then what we're going to do, we're just going to create a new thing. And this new thing will be another invoice number where the number will be whatever we used uh, or actually do a search for again, invoice numbers, same thing as before number descending. Yes. First items number plus one. Okay. So let me explain to you what I did here. We have this database of invoice numbers. It starts for 100 now. Okay. And this is not taken yet. What happens if we create our invoice? We, um, we basically use this highest number in this case, 100, we use that. So this is done. And then in the next step, we create a new invoice number, which will be the last numbers plus one in this case, 101. So now the next time an invoice is created, we will use 101 and then 102 is created and so on and so forth. You have a really easy ongoing invoicing system, which allows you that the system will always generate um, an invoice number, which has just plus one to the last invoice number. So let's try that as well. Um, so let's refresh our page here and let's generate a few invoices. So um, let's click again on generate invoice. Again, the structure will be statically or, or no dynamic data. Um, so, this is the new one here. Let's take a look at that. So our invoice number should be 100. Great. That works. If we take a look in our database now under app data, awesome. We have 100 we had and 101 was created. So now let's create another invoice. So our next invoice is here. Let's take a look at that. Perfect. The number is 101. Again, if we look in a bubble database, we have 102. So again, a really, really simple way of um, generating ongoing invoice numbers. One last thing I want to show you as well is what you might want to do. So in most cases, users won't be able to generate an invoice uh, by the click of a button. This will be something you will do in the moment a user pays. Okay. 
So what I recommend doing is use always use these actions if you can as backend workflows. Well, what's the advantage of backend workflows? They're much faster um, and they don't put a strain on the user's current browser and basically, and these are actions which don't have to, uh, the user doesn't have to wait for because they're handled by the server. So how are you gonna enable them? Under settings, API, you wanna enable backend workflows. We'll then have this menu here, backend workflows. And we're, we're gonna create a new API workflow. And this API workflow will be called generate invoice, all right? We don't wanna expose it as a public workflow. Let's check these two boxes as well. And then what you can do, for example, you can add some uh, parameters. So you can say, okay, I wanna add, pa pass the current user as a parameter. And then you can in, uh, generate an invoice server side. So you can still use the same action here, okay? Again, use everything you did before. Um, make changes to things, so to the current user's invoices, and you, you pass the user as a parameter, okay? And you add the result of step one's invoice as well. And then you can even send an email um, with an attachment and attach the file, which is result of step one invoice. So this whole workflow, generating the invoice, adding it to the user, and sending an email to the user with the invoice attached, you can all do that server side, and I highly recommend you do that. So how would that look? So let's say you have again, um, oh, that's the wrong page. Let's say again, you have um, a page here, uh, but this time it's not the general invoice page. Let's say it's the, I don't know, the card page where a user purchases your product, okay? And then we ha you have the button. Doesn't actually matter the styling, but you have a button here and this button will say pay now, okay? And when the button is clicked, you will do all the paying uh, functionality. So you will say, all right, so charge the user with Stripe maybe, um, make changes to thing and show pop up, whatever. And then at the last step, you can say, all right, custom events, I wanna schedule an API workflow. The API workflow I wanna schedule is generate invoice. The scheduled date could be even, you can do current date time, or you can say, all right, current date time plus a few minutes, if you wanna have some space between the timing. Um, and the user you wanna pass is the current user and probably also some pricing information to pass over the invoice data if you have many different products uh, and yeah that's that's all you have to do you just generate the schedule api workflow this will be instant and then the server basically the back end will have to take care of all the heavy loading we'll send over the invoice we'll generate it and everything will be taken care of so um, a quick introduction into our plugin and how to use it correctly and for different use cases um, i hope you learned something and i'm going to see you guys for next tutorial with noco hq bye